What's up guys, Travis here. Welcome back to yet another video. I'm so excited to do this video today because I'm gonna test out the Canon RF 35mm f-stop 1.8 macro lens. And yes, finally I invested some money to get this RF glass to pair up with my EOS R. So today's video, I'll be showing you guys what kind of image quality that you will get from this lens by shooting some products over here that I've set up. And also I'll do some performance tests on the image stabilization that is built into this lens by showing you some sample footages that I've shot. So without further ado, let me just show you quickly what I'm going to shoot with this lens today. So let's go. Alright, so here's the setup, pretty simple, nothing special. Here's the watch that I'm gonna shoot today. I'll mount the camera on top of this tripod and uh, some lights. I'll be using the Godox speed light to shoot this product. And then, um, of course, just in case some reflector, just in case that if um, the, the light is unable to hit the bottom of the watch, I'll use this reflector to reflect some lights towards the watch. Alright, so as simple as that, there's nothing much I can do in a compact space like this. So I probably will share with you the camera screen so you guys know how it looks like from the camera. So let's jump into the screen right now. Alright, so what you're looking at right now is the view from the camera and the watch is placed perfectly in the center of the frame. Alright, just to jump in here real quick, look at the distance between the lens and the product. It's pretty close. Uh, not sure if this is 17 centimeters, but it, I can say that it's pretty close to the product. So now let's just proceed by taking a shot. Alright, so as predicted, the light didn't hit the bottom of the watch. So it's a little bit dark at the bottom of the watch. So I'm going to take the second shot with the reflector on. Alright, so after a couple of tries, I finally nailed the photo. So let's jump into Lightroom to check those photos out. Alright, so these are the photos that I've taken just now. So the first test I'm going to check is to see whether there's any chromatic abrasions. So let's us just zoom in over here. And definitely you will see some pink fringes over here at the high contrast area, as well as some green color fringes over here. So let's see whether we can fix this problem by hitting the profile settings over here and remove chromatic abrasion. Alright, let's zoom in again. Okay, these settings definitely help a little bit, but let's go to the manual section and enhance it further. Alright, so now the pink fringe is removed, and now let's do the same for the green. Alright, so now let's zoom out and proceed to the other photo. In this photo, I'm going to do the same to check the chromatic abrasions. Let's zoom in maybe over here. Alright, there's definitely pink fringes and some green fringes as well. Again, let's try to fix this by hitting the profile settings and remove chromatic abrasions. Go to back to manual and uh, enhance it even further. For the green color, let's increase the amount of intensity. All right, it's looking good. I'll do the same as well for the pink fringe. All right, let's zoom out. So now I can conclude that this lens can produce some fringes. It's not very strong, just a little bit. However, you still can fix it in Lightroom. So now let's jump into the next photo. So in this photo, I'm going to test out the sharpness of this lens. I shot this photo outdoors at f1.8. So now the focus area is in the middle of the flower. So let us check whether is it in focus. Definitely it's in focus as you can see all the details on the flower. Over here and over here. Alright, so now let's zoom out and proceed to another photo. Alright, so the photo over here, we are going to check for vignetting. Definitely, you can see some vignetting over here, just how strong it is. Let's check. Alright, um, there's a little bit of distortion as well. And I could say that the vignetting is quite strong because let's see the before and the after. So now if you ask me if this lens is good for portraits, I have a, a few sample of portrait shots over here. As you can see over here, the vignetting is quite strong. And now let's zoom in again to check the sharpness of the lens. You could say that it's pretty sharp. You can see all the details on the eyebrows, on the skin, on the eyes, even the contact lens, stuff like that. All right, so another photo over here, as you can see the eye is tech sharp at f1.8 as well. Uh, the eyebrow is a little bit out of focus because it's not in the same plane. 
All right, so now you have seen the image quality taken by the Canon RF 35mm lens. Now let's proceed to the performance of the image stabilization. So the first shot that I'm going to show you is with the image stabilization turned off. And now with the image stabilization turned on. And now just an extra footage for you to see the results with the image stabilization turned on and with the digital stabilization turned on. All right, so now let's compare side by side. So now I could conclude that this lens image stabilization is quite good. Now I'm not going to talk about the specs of this lens because I don't want this video to be super long. So if you want to check out the specs, I will link it down in the description box below. You can check it out yourself. All right, so for the big question over here, should you get the Canon RF 35mm f-stop 1.8 macro lens? It depends. If you have tight budget, I'll definitely say this is a go-to lens for you because this lens is actually very versatile. First of all, it can do macro shots. Second, it has image stabilization built in. And the third, the price of this lens is just under $400, which is around 2000 MYR. But if you have a big budget, definitely skip this lens. You should go for the RF L series lens. Those lens are amazing. Sadly, I couldn't review one right now. Um, I hope Canon sponsor me maybe. All right, so that's it for me today. I hope you like this review. If you like this video, please remember to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, ring the notification bell so each time I upload a video, you will get notified. And as always, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.